uh, tracking data. So you got tracking data through the league, I believe. So you had that in terms of that was part of the the analytics that you would do. Can you just kind of maybe riff on that a little bit in terms of how you know what kind of date a little bit more on tracking data for those watching? Maybe what kind of data is given to you and, and what you actually do with that and what insights you can get from that. Yeah. So if you look at like um, basically we divide uh, data for the most part in the analytics world into event data and tracking data. So event data is companies like Y Scouts, um, Stats Bomb, Stats Perform uh, all provide event data. And this is uh, basically like every on ball event. So you'll depending on the provider, you'll get between like 1500 and 3000 events per game. And so this is every pass that a player makes where it happened, every tackle, every shot, every interception. And so if you ever see these like sequence maps on uh, Twitter or wherever, you'll see like, oh, this player had the ball here, then they passed it here, then maybe they dribbled here, and then they passed it here. So it's like a line and you only follow the ball, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously gives you a ton of information, but it's missing the context of what are the other options the player had? What was the opposition doing at this time? It's missing that like broader context. So with tracking data, you get uh, the location of every single player somewhere between like 25 and 30 times per second. Um, so you're going from a data set where you have, as I said, between 1,500 and 3,000, uh, like kind of rows of data in a traditional sense of the word to um, close to 4 million. So it's a way, way richer data set. Um, but at the same time, it's harder to use because you have so much more information. And you also sometimes don't have those key actions. So really like often the actions we care the most about are those like on ball actions, passes, shots. Um, so the way that like I've approached the problem of using tracking data, and I know a lot of people have is to often just to like add context to the events that we already have. So if we're making a pass, I wanna know how many passing options does that player have? I wanna know, did the pass break a line? Uh, did they play through the line? Did they play around the line? Um, was uh, how much pressure was on the, the player making the pass? Um, and then also looking at what's happening again off the ball with his teammates. So did you have a teammate making a run in behind? Did he see that run in behind? So all these things we can start to analyze with tracking data. And so that's sort of the first way that tracking data is used is to like augment event data. Um, and then the second way, which you see more and more of now are these like continuous possession value models. So understanding things like what is the actual probability of scoring from any situation. Yeah. Um, and you can approximate that with event data but really without understanding the context of the opposition, it's a difficult challenge. Okay, so if you've made it this far into the video, you must be enjoying the content, either that or you have simply fallen asleep. So whichever one of them is, you probably won't mind me asking you for a quick favor. So as you know, I'm always looking to grow the channel. So the bigger the channel gets, the more people we can reach and impact, but also the bigger and better guests we can invite on to the channel to have these types of chats. So with that in mind, if you haven't already done so, I would very much appreciate it if you did hit the subscribe button down below the video. The stats are showing around 25% of viewers are subscribed. So there's a big chunk of you that are watching the videos, but you haven't yet hit the subscribe button, but I will let you off because you can do it right now. It's free and it literally takes one second. So if you go down, click the subscribe button, it would mean a lot to the channel and help the channel to grow. So that's all for now. Let's get back to the video. Yeah. So I think I've seen you've mentioned before in terms of with the tracking data, so say the, obviously the X and Y coordinates, you can then kind of define different events such as you mentioned off the ball run so like an overlap or you can define kind of what pressure looks like from the the tracking data so can you just go a bit more on that Sam in terms of like for example pressure how do you define pressure based on the tracking data yeah so typically like there's some companies for example that now will say um whether when like a player is applying pressure so um if I'm on the ball and you come and close me down it they'll say okay Chris made one pressure here. So in the same way that it was like an on ball action, you could say that yeah, you made a, a, a pressure here. Uh, and then maybe we could assign some value to you based on what I do. So if I then play a pass out into touch, you would have a successful pressure because your pressure forced me into a poor decision where we lost the ball. Mm -hmm. So that's like one way of looking at pressure, which is more of kind of the event data way. And then in the tracking data way, we can think of pressure as this continuous thing. So if you um if you're applying pressure to me kind of head on so if you're running towards me as i have the ball yeah. that's one type of pressure but say that all you're doing is cutting off my passing angle uh so if i'm like let's say i'm a left center back 
And your goal um, as the pressing player in the situation was only to remove that option for me to play a cross field pass to the right, to like to the right back, basically. So you stand there, you've cut off that passing angle. And then there's another player who comes in and provides pressure on the ball. Yeah. So if from a, um, an event data standpoint, you would say, okay, first pass is under pressure, second pass is under pressure. But this second one, you've cut off a passing angle by pressuring me from one side. And then there's another player coming to deliver pressure. We can now assign that using tracking data. We can assign that a value between zero and one or whatever pressing scale you want to use. We can identify that that's a very different type of pressure than just you coming towards me with the ball so, or when I have the ball. So with tracking data, we can get into a bit more of those nuances. And we don't have to consider pressure like a binary thing that you're under pressure or not under pressure. Yeah. Yeah.